Hey, it's Mike Chen. Let me ask you guys living in the US from one American to another, have you ever found yourself in an argument with a friend about miles versus kilometers or having to explain what homecoming is when you travel abroad, especially now with this new Spider-Man movie? Different countries, of course, have their own different customs from the way words are pronounced and spelled to what units of measurement is acceptable for daily use. And of course, every country around the globe has its own way of presenting things. But when it comes to the US, a lot of foreigners and visitors end up back baffled and confused about certain practices and customs that seem to be quite unique just to us. So in this video, we're going to count down 10 things Americans do that really confuses the rest of the world. We'll start off with number 10, the metric system versus the imperial system. If you're from, well, most parts of the world, you have grown accustomed to using units of measurement like kilometers, centimeters, liters, but in the US, you may end up confused and struggling to convert your units of measurement to adapt to local units like inches, yards, and miles were having to convert today's weather from Celsius to Fahrenheit. That's because we love using the imperial system, but we are in the minority here, like the extreme minority. In fact, only three countries in the world still utilizes the imperial system, Liberia, Myanmar, and of course the US. Now you might be thinking, okay, the entire world is basically on the metric system. Wouldn't it be easier for us if freezing temperature of water is just known as zero rather than 32? And it must be some really profound reason we're not switching over. Over, right? I mean, I, I guess we can give ourselves props for not bending to peer pressure. Number nine, sporting scholarships. In the US, it is common for school athletes to be accepted in college because of how good they are at sports. In fact, many of them are even offered scholarships as long as, well, they bat for the right university team. This academic practice is found to be bizarre by many countries, mainly because no such program exists in their curricula. Number eight, calling jam jelly. Whether it's a point of confusion or just playing happy coincidence, the word jelly seems to be used interchangeably with jam, seeing that they have similar consistencies. It's the interchanging of the use of the word that confuses non-Americans because jelly is generally used in other countries to describe a food product that is made out of gelatin, and the homemade fruit preserve used to spread over bread is called jam. So to, let's say, an Englishman, offering him a spread of jelly on his skull might give him the impression that he has unwittingly stepped into the twilight zone. Number seven, gun laws. In general, guns and ammunition laws in the US are an often discussed subject by many countries around the world. Many non-Americans have been stumped by the fact that generally anyone can just easily buy bullets over the counter or military-grade firearm on the internet without really any kind of screening process. While there are provisions in the U.S. Constitution that provides individuals the right to bear arms, people overseas show an amount of concern and confusion over some clauses in different states that allows, for example, people to openly carry firearms in public. And personally, I don't really have a huge opinion either way on the gun issue, but I do like the fact that while I'm in a country like Japan, if somebody's gonna kill me, they're gonna have to work really hard at it. Their sore skills better be better than mine. Number six, price tags without the tax. This is something we are all used to, but people from other countries may be surprised to find out that sales taxes are not included in any price tax, which is quite strange given that many countries around the world adopt the practice of including taxes in any product tags to do away with the burden of, you know, making people do math in their heads while they're shopping. Now, the reason behind this is that since the U.S. has a different set of regional laws governing each state, that would mean that taxes will also vary per state. And in each state, items may cost a little more or a little less than the retail price depending on individual state taxes. Number five, large food portions. Okay, I have to admit, I really don't have a problem with this one, but most visitors to the U.S. are shocked at how large our food portions are. I guess the concept of supersized me is definitely an American one. So I don't know, will they literally have a heart attack if they win somewhere? like, you know, the heart attack grill in Vegas. Number four, the icy love affair. Americans love iced drinks from iced coffee to our sodas. Our cups are always brimming with ice. While we can't argue that ice can freshen up a drink, the average American's obsession with these frozen bits of water confuses many people from other parts of the world simply because they can drastically water down your drink and at some point add a little bit of maybe dirt into it if the water used comes from a questionable source. Number three, tipping. Tipping is just part of life here in the US and we tend to tip everyone. Have you ever got a visit from a plumber and then Googled how much to tip the guy on top of his already crazy expensive bill? From waiters to cabbies to hotel bellhops to your garbage man, all good service here seems to suggest a tip. But the thing is, while tipping is and should be voluntary, not tipping is seen as being really rude here. And especially in New York City, if you don't tip at a restaurant, the waiter's gonna chase you down the street. And yes, that does happen. But tipping in many other parts of the world is not emphasized 
surprised or even not expected. Number two, going out for drinks. TV shows like Cheers and How I Met Your Mother seems to have reinforced the American practice of casually inviting friends out for a few drinks at a local bar. But in countries like Japan, it is not an entirely alien concept to go out for a few drinks after work. However, casually calling up people to go out is something are heard of in many cultures. In some parts of the world, people gather together with a drink in their hand at parties or special occasions, but not, you know, on a Wednesday. Finally, number one, spending for college. According to the data from the College Board from the academic year of 2014 through 15, the average cost to get into an in-state public college is about $23,000 a year. Going to a private school will burn you about $46,000 a year. And by private, we're not even including the Ivy League schools such as Harvard, where a single year can cost you $60,000. The cost of higher learning in America is confusingly expensive, and many students who have graduated have gone on to establish distinguished careers are still paying for thousands of dollars worth of student loans. Compared to countries like England, where the cost of attending a single year at Oxford is only $13,000, American colleges and universities basically drive students into deep debt even before graduating. That is extremely shocking to people from, let's say, Sweden, Germany, and France where college education is free or partially free. In countries like Denmark, there are instances where the government even pays for your college education and even provides you with a student allowance. So there you go. Those are some things that if you're not from America and you're just visiting, you might be shocked with. Also, uh, don't get injured while you're visiting the US because our emergency rooms are not free and they're really, really, really expensive. Oh, and by the way, that's something Americans find shocking as well. So you're not alone there. All right, guys, thank you all so much for watching this video. I'll see you later.